My God, this blue is so blue. What's up? So today I'm gonna talk about To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Monier and I don't know why I'm talking so fast. So, as usual, the summary first. So this is a story of Lyra. I say Lyra. Some people say Lyra. It doesn't really matter, right? And she's a siren royalty and every year for her birthday she has to kill a human and take its heart. But not every human, but every year it's gonna be a prince. And so far she has 17 hearts. But one day something very bad happens. Lyra will kill one of her own. Actually, she will kill a mermaid, not a siren. But never mind. So her mother, the sea queen, is super mad and she's gonna transform her into something horrible. A human. If she wants to be a siren again and if she wants to be forgiven by her mother, she has to bring her mother a hurt, a lion's hurt, who is also a prince, obviously. But if she fails, she will stay a human forever. And you're gonna ask me why especially Alliance her just because she failed once. She tried to kill him, didn't succeed. So now she really has to kill him. So talking about the prince Elian, he never felt like home in his kingdom, the most powerful kingdom, but he always felt like a sailor, a pirate, a captain or whatever, he feels like he belongs to the ocean. And he's not the usual prince, like he's a hunter, a siren hunter, so yeah, not that glamorous actually. And this is not his hobby, this is his calling, believe me. And one day Prince Lion will rescue a drowning woman. Guess who? And a woman coming from actually nowhere offered him to kill all the siren kind in the world and yeah that's pretty much the deal they're gonna make yeah. but alliance is not a usual prince and he knows that he shouldn't be trusting anyone so yeah this is a retelling again a little mermaid retelling but it's really not the usual retelling it's kind of dark for a ye fantasy let's be honest it's vicious and we never fall into the usual tropes. I was honestly super surprised, but in a very good way. So let's talk about the two main characters who are actually the two point of views in this story. So Lyra is a princess, so she's Siren Princess, and she's also known as Princess Bane because she's like a heart ripper. Yes, that's really what she does for a siren. She's very brutal, vicious, and really not ashamed of that. She is proud of it. She only rips Prince's heart. I want to say she's very vicious, but I don't believe she really is. Because she kind of does it to prove her mother and herself that she's worth something. And she's worth to have the throne in some way. Because sirens in the story, they only see the power and the thrones and how they can get it. So that my explain her behavior. She's fearless and she wants to be the queen. She's strong and stubborn and pride and savage. And I just want to read two quotes about her. So first, technically I am a murderer, but I like to think that's one of my better qualities. And second, in my heart I'm as wild as the ocean that raised me. And I want to say like with this code you can see that she is very cold and deep but you can see her involving in the story chapter after chapter really interesting character and then on the other side you have Elian who is a prince of a kingdom Midas the most powerful kingdom but he is not really like every single prince his kingdom and his power and responsibilities kind of suffocate him that's why he belongs like to the ocean according to him so he's basically a pirate i want to say captain who has one thing in mind to make the seas safer for everyone and i loved his crew and his worship kind of way so the name of the worship is sad S-A-A-D, not sad. He's hilarious and amazing and super smart. And I really, like every word he said, I enjoy it because he was so sarcastic and I really like connect. So Elian will save 
Lyra, who just became like a human. So something I forgot to say, when she became a human, she lost all her siren power and strength. Obviously, Elian doesn't know who she really is. But yeah, obviously, also, he doesn't think he should trust her entirely. So Alliance wants to kill the Sea Queen and all the Sirens, and he wants to make the sea safer. And Lyra wants to kill her mother to have the throne. So surprisingly or not, they kind of need each other to achieve the goals. So they're gonna team up until the final confrontation. Obviously. Together they were like brilliant, amazing, uh, smart and hilarious and sarcastic and funny and badass and do I have to say more like I love them together so much. I love the way they evolved together as a team and they were sarcastic to each other, they didn't trust each other but they had to so it was like hate and love, hate and love, I really loved it. For me, the story was like magic. I didn't bother the actual love story in it, even if I'm still looking for the perfect why without any love in it, only platonic friendship. But I get it, no platonic relationship in a YA book. It seems that is the rule. So I gave it a five stars, even if some details bother me, like just for instance, uh, Lyra was born as a siren. She was raised as a siren. She act as a siren. But going through the pages and the pages, you can see that she became more human. She started to feel bad for some stuff and everything. So I didn't understand that, how you can change in a few days. Like, yeah. How can you stop thinking in a siren ray after being a human for a few days. I just don't get it, but yeah. And just something else. Are these sirens really a threat? I mean, if the sirens were that dangerous, why didn't all the kingdom like build a huge and strong army to kill them? I just don't get it. Why only a lion is thinking about killing the sirens? So it means that it's not really a threat. Or is it? I didn't get it. Yeah, I guess it's only me being annoying, but, but besides that, I really love Lyra and Elias together. They were like an unwanted alliance. And what I enjoy is that there were no insta-love of flowers or poems or lyrics or, you know, the cheesy side of a love story. It was actually the opposite, which I loved it, like insults, lies, manipulations, full of betrayals. Yeah, the hate thing made them stronger and I really love them. I guess that the hate to love relationship is a trope I'm falling for. Guilty! <laughs> but overall, like, the story was amazing and well written and was full of details. I could almost smell the sea or feel the salt or the wind from the warship. Yeah, sometimes I was just like feeling like I was sitting next to uh, Lyra and Elian and the crew and everyone there. Hey, what are you doing, Mooney? I really think it will be one of my favorite books in 2018. I've been so lucky with all my reading since January 2018. So I'm super happy. But yeah, Alexandra Crystal was just amazing. Her writing was magic. Every detail she described, I could see it. I could feel it. It made me like, oh, I don't know. I really, really enjoyed it. The world building was amazing. and. The final thing at the end, I was like speechless. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to think. I was just reading and eating the words and everything. And I was so stressed. I, one other thing that I also loved in it is that it's a message, actually. Uh, I think I said exactly the same thing for a state of sorrow. Blood is just blood. If you don't get along with your family, you can create your own family. And I really loved that message in this book as well. You know, it's not only about blood. You can find people to trust, uh, to spur to you, to help you and everything. That's also why I loved all the characters in the book, especially Madrid, uh, Kalia, Tarek, 
Kai, etc. I know it's a retelling, but you can actually read about some adults' manipulation, you know, parents' manipulation and abuse. And it was an interesting point of view because it's something that really happens every day. It is a fast-paced, addictive story with fun characters and lovable characters. They were so likable and vibrant. I love also the fact that it wasn't like a very happy kind of retelling, you know, happy ever after. It was darker and I really did like that. You know, like it's a siren story, not like the Little Mermaid story, so they're not that kind. <laughs> what I'm in love with is that this is a standalone. You don't have to wait months or years to read the next one and I really loved it. It was full. It's like how many pages? It's 340 pages, so it's enough for one story. It was full. You don't need to know more about it. I really love the fact that it was a standalone. Really, really, really. I really felt like everything was brilliant in the book. I was sometimes overwhelmed by all the details, like the final battle. I was like very speechless. Yeah, I love all the details and all the background story. You know, every member of the crew story and everything. I really love that. I really love the crew so much. I feel like it's the same in Heart of Iron by Ashley Postum. But yeah, the crew was a strong part of the book. I really love the characters. They were like very realistic and likable. And I felt like also I wanted to be a part of that pirate kind of crew. <laughs> Overall, let's summarize it. Not a single sentence disappointed me. So are you ready to discover a darker and sinister retelling of The Little Mermaid? So Wolf, thank you for watching. I hope I made you want to read that book super soon. <laughs> thank you for watching again. Take care. See you soon. Bye.